Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Christopher Grabowski, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco Systems. For the purpose of this demonstration, I configured three EPGs reflecting the traditional three-tier design with web, application, and database layers. My goal is to insert firewall with advanced threat protection in between the three tiers of my application connected with ACI infrastructure. To achieve that, we have three contracts between the EPGs each with associated service graph chaining in firewall inspection. On the firewall side, I have three interfaces, and each of them is used in one of the service graphs. Each interface is member of a different virtual router, allowing me to precisely control routing between the pair of the EPGs when the packets are redirected from ACI to the firewall for the inspection. The servers hosting my application live in three EPGs and the APIC learns their IP addresses. For example, here we can see the IP address of my application server in the application EPG. The APIC keeps track of the endpoints in each EPG and can be used as a source of intelligence for firewalls dynamic objects. You can install an FMC endpoint update plugin in your APIC to stream the up-to-date IP to EPG mappings to your firewall and keep your security policy aligned with the ACI contracts. The plugin allows you to send dynamic objects to multiple ASAs and the FMCs at the same time. In the FMC device configuration, you specify the source tenant as well as the FMC's target domain. This gives you flexibility to specify which dynamic objects reflecting the EPGs are dynamically updated in your individual firewall management centers. Now if we switch to the FMC, you'll notice we have three dynamic objects, one for each EPG in ACI. Each of those dynamic objects contain IP addresses of servers currently running in each EPG. With dynamic objects, you can now build a firewall policy that tightly aligns with your ACI configuration. Any changes to the EPGs on the ACI side will propagate automatically to the firewall policy without any administrative efforts. If you look at the firewall events, you'll notice the dynamic attributes are now included in the logs, which allows you to easily understand the ACI context of the flow. The second functionality I wanted to show you is the rapid threat containment module that you can use for automated remediation actions. The module is installed and configured on the FMC. You need to set the APIC's IP and credentials and determine if you want to quarantine by the source or the destination of the malicious traffic. Optionally, you can set IP addresses of resources excluded from the remediation, as well as management contract that allows access to quarantine servers for investigation purposes. The correlation capabilities allow you to specify what security events should cause a server to be isolated from the rest of the network. In this demonstration, I configured a correlation policy that isolates a server that downloaded a file with a malware disposition. Let's see how it works. Here, I'm downloading a virus to my application server, and as soon as the firewall inspects and convicts the file, I can see the remediation is triggered. The application server is no longer reachable from neither web nor database layers. If we have a look at the APIC, the application server is moved out from the application EPG to a micro-segmentation quarantine EPG. On the FMC side, we can see that the application's EPG dynamic object is now empty. And at the same time, we have a new dynamic object representing the quarantined EPG. If we look inside, you'll notice the IP address of the quarantine application server.